Welcome to the new lecture of the Real Analysis 1 course. Please check the description of this video to find the links to the previous video, the next video and the entire playlist of this course. We have a question here which has three parts. Part A. Show open interval AB is similar to R for any interval open interval AB. Part B. Show that an unbounded interval like open interval A infinity which is equal to the set of all x as that x greater than a has the same cardinality as r as well. Part c using open intervals makes it more convenient to produce the required 1 1 on 2 functions but it is not really necessary. Show that show that interval closed 0 open 1 is similar to open interval 0 1 by exhibiting a 1 1 on 2 function between these two sets. So here first of all we have to show that open interval AB is similar to R. R means a set of real numbers for any open interval AB. That means here we have to show that open interval AB has the same cardinality as that of R for any open interval AB. To show that open interval AB has the same cardinality as that of R we have to show that there exists a function theta from open interval AB to set of real numbers R which is 1 1 and on 2. Now we know that if F is a function from A to B and G is another function from B to C both are 1 1 and on 2. F from A to B is 1 1 and on 2. G from B to C is 1 1 and on 2. Then we know that the function h is equal to g composition f from a to c is 1 1 and on 2. So we use this idea in this question to show that a b is similar to r. Now for the proof first we take an open interval open interval a b which is contained in the set of real numbers r. Now we define a function f from this open interval a b to open interval minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2 by f of x is equal to x minus a plus b by 2. So you can see that f of x is equal to x minus a plus b by 2 a plus b by 2 is a real number. So x minus a real number. So you can see that this is a linear function. To find f of a you can substitute uh, x as a so f of a will be a minus a plus b by 2. So clearly we will get it as a minus b by 2 and a minus b by 2 is minus of b minus a by 2. So here you can see that the image of a is this point b minus a by 2 and we can check that uh, f of b is b minus a plus b by 2 and clearly this is b minus a by 2. So under this function the image of b is b minus a by 2. So as this is a linear function, linear function means it's a, the graph of that represents a straight line. So since this represents a straight line we can see that this function is 1 1 and on 2. So the function f from open interval a b to open interval minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2 is 1 1 and on 2 which means that open interval a b is similar to open interval minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2. Now we will define another function g from minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2 to open interval minus 1 1. Let's see the function. g is a function defined from open interval minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2 to minus 1 1 open interval minus 1 1 and it is defined as g of x is equal to 2x by b minus a. Under this function uh, you can see that this is also a linear function b 2 by b minus a is a real number so it is 2 by b minus a multiplied by x g of x is 2 by b minus a multiplied by x or 2x by b minus a so it's a linear function now we will check the image of uh, minus of b minus a by 2 
So this will be 2 into minus of b minus a by 2 the whole divided by b minus a. So from here b minus a and b minus a will get delete to give you 2 2 will delete and you will get minus 1. So you can see that under this function the image of minus of b minus a by 2 is minus 1 and we will check the image of b minus a by 2. So it will be 2x, x is b minus a by 2 the whole divided by b minus a. So b minus a, b minus a will cancel, 2, 2 will cancel to give you 1. So under the under this function the image of b minus a by 2 is 1. And I told you that g of x is equal to 2x by b minus a is a linear function. So it will be clearly 1, 1 and on 2. So the function g from the open interval minus of b minus a by 2, b minus a by 2 to open interval minus 1, 1 is 1, 1 and on 2. And this means that open interval minus of b minus a by 2, b minus a by 2 is similar to open interval minus 1, 1. Now we shall define another function h from open interval minus 1, 1 to r which is a set of real numbers by h of x is equal to x by x square minus 1. Now this function is non-linear so we will check whether this function is 1, 1 and on 2. For checking the function is 1, 1 we will take two points x1 and x2 in open interval minus 1, 1 which is the domain of the function h. To show that the function h is 1, 1 we have to either show that x1 not equal to x2 implies h of x1 not equal to h of x2 or we have to show that h of x1 equal to h of x2 implies x1 equal to x2. Now we will use the second method here to show that the function h is 1 1. We will start with h of x1 is equal to h of x2. Now h of x1 equal to h of x2 implies that h of x1 is x1 by x1 square minus 1 and h of x2 is x2 by x2 square minus 1. Now when we cross multiply this we will get x1 into x2 square minus 1 is equal to x2 into x1 square minus 1. Now we will multiply this inside. So you will get x1 x2 square minus x1 here and here you will get x2 x1 square when you take to the left side you will get minus x1 square x2 and this is minus x2 when you take it to the left side you will get plus x2 is equal to 0. Now you club these two terms together and this two terms together so you will get from this term and this term you can take x1 x2 as a common factor so you will get x1 x2 into x2 minus x1 plus what is left is x2 minus x1 equal to 0. So from this term and this term you can take x2 minus x1 as a common factor so you will get x2 minus x1 into what is left is x1 x2 plus 1 equal to 0. So from here you will get either this term x2 minus x1 is equal to 0 or this term x1 x2 plus 1 is equal to 0. That means x1 is equal to x2 or x1 x2 is equal to minus 1. Now we know that x1 and x2 are values of uh, open interval minus 1 1. Now since they are points from open interval minus 1 1 their product x1 into x2 cannot be minus 1. So the only possibility is that x1 is equal to x2. We took two points x1 x2 element of minus 1 1. We started with h of x1 is equal to h of x2 and we got x1 is equal to x2. So this implies that the function h is 1 to 1. Now we shall check whether this function h defined from minus 1 1 to the set of real numbers r is on 2. To show that this is on 2 we have to show that for any c element of r 
there exist an x element of my open interval minus 1 1 such that h of x is equal to c. Now for this we will choose any c element of r or any real number c. Now first we let c not equal to 0. If c not equal to 0 then h of x equal to c implies that x by x square minus 1 h of x is x, x by x square minus 1 equal to c. So when you cross multiply here you will get x is equal to cx square minus c. So bringing this x to the side you will get 0 is equal to cx square minus x minus c or you will get cx square minus x minus c is equal to 0. Now from here this is this being a quadratic equation you can use the quadratic formula to find the value of x. So x is equal to 1 plus or minus root of 1 square which is 1 plus 4c square whole divided by 2c. So here we got two values for x which was uh, x is equal to 1 plus or minus root of 1 plus 4c square whole divided by 2c. Now we, we are considering the case where c not equal to 0. This will we will in turn split this case into two when c less than 0 and when c greater than 0. First we will consider the case where c is less than 0. So when c is less than 0 we will take we have two values here we will take one value x is equal to 1 minus root of 1 plus 4 c square by 2 c and we know that uh, if c is negative 1 plus 4 c square will be greater than 1 so that root of 1 plus 4 c square is again greater than 1. So this means the quantity 1 minus root of 1 plus 4 c square is negative and as c is negative 2 c is negative so this is a negative number by another negative number so you will get x is greater than 0. Now again x is 1 minus root of 1 plus 4 c square. Now we have the case where c is a uh, negative. So here if c is negative consider 1 plus 4 c square and uh, 1 minus 4 c plus 4 c square. As c is negative minus 4 c will be positive so that 1 minus 4 c square will be less than 1 minus 4 c plus 4 c square. Now 1 minus 4 c plus 4 c square is uh, 1 minus 2 c the whole square. So we have 1 plus 4 c square is less than 1 minus 2c the whole square. Now we take square root on both sides. So we will get 1 plus 4c square is less than square root of 1 minus 2c the whole square. So if I multiply with minus both sides I will get minus of root of 1 plus 4c square is greater than minus of root of 1 minus 2c the whole square. If I add 1 to both sides, you will get 1 minus root of 1 plus 4c square greater than 1 minus root of 1 minus 2c the whole square. This inequality will be unchanged because I am adding a positive quantity both sides. Now I am going to divide both sides with 2c. 2c is a negative quantity. So when I divide with a negative quantity 2c, what happens is that this inequality will revert. This will become less than 1 minus root of 1 minus 2c the whole square whole divided by 2c. So here you, you will get that this is less than 1 minus root of 1 minus 2c the whole square by 2c. And uh, we know that square root of 1 minus 2c the whole square is 1 minus 2c. So you will get uh, 1 minus 1 minus 2c by 2c. 1 and minus 1 will delete. You will get 2c by 2c which is 1. So that means what you got is that you got x is less than 1. So this implies that we have x is greater than 0 and x is less than 1. This means that x is an element of open interval 0 1 which in turn implies that x is an element of open interval minus 1 1. So what we got is that when c is less than 0 
h of x equal to c implies that x is an element of minus 1, 1. Now we will consider the next case where, where c is greater than 0. Now when c greater than 0, x is equal to 1 minus root of 1 plus 4c square by 2c. We know that root of 1 plus 4c square is clearly greater than 1. So 1 minus root of 1 plus 4c square is a negative quantity. And 2c is a positive quantity. So this is a negative quantity divided by a positive quantity. So clearly this is less than 0. So we get x less than 0. Now x equal to 1 minus root of 1 plus 4c square by 2c is greater than 1 minus root of 1 plus 2c the whole square. We know that when c is uh, greater than 0, 1 plus 4c square is less than 1 plus 4c plus 4c square. So on the right side we have 1 plus 2c the whole square, 1 plus 4c plus 4c square is 1 plus 2c the whole square. When we take square root on both sides, we will get square root of 1 plus 4c square is uh, less than square root of 1 plus 2c the whole square. Now, when we multiply with minus 1 both sides, we will get minus of root of 1 plus 4c square is greater than minus of square root of 1 plus 2c the whole square. And when we add 1 to both sides, as 1 is a positive quantity, the inequality remains same. So 1 minus root of 1 plus 4c square is greater than 1 minus root of 1 minus 2c the whole square. And we are dividing both sides with a positive quantity 2c so that the inequality will remain unchanged. That means 1 minus root of 1 plus 4c square by 2c is greater than 1 minus square root of 1 plus 2c the whole square by 2c. So this is a how it comes. Now this is equal to 1 minus 1 plus 2c by 2c. So you will get minus 2c by 2c which is equal to minus 1. So what we got is that x is greater than x is greater than minus 1. So when x is greater than minus 1 and also x is less than 0. That means x lies in between minus 1 and 0. So this implies that x is an element of open interval minus 1 1. Here we have considered the two cases c less than 0 and c greater than 0. Now we will consider the case when c equal to 0. So when c is equal to 0 then h of x equal to c implies that h of x is x by x square minus 1 and c is 0. We know that the value of c is 0. So when you cross multiply you will get x is equal to 0. And x is equal to 0 is an element of open interval minus 1. Now we have taken a real number c element of r and we have shown that h of x is equal to c implies that x is an element of minus 1 1 whatever be the value of c. Whenever c is less than 0, greater than 0 or c equal to 0, x will be an element of minus 1 1. And this implies that the function h from minus 1 1 open interval minus 1 1 to the set of real numbers r is on 2. Now we have defined three functions here. The first function was f from open interval a b to open interval minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2. Second one was uh, the function g from open interval minus of b minus a by 2 b minus a by 2 to open interval minus 1 1 and now we have defined a function h from minus 1 1 to r. Now all these functions f, g and h were 1 1 and on 2. Since all these functions were 1 1 and on 2, their composition h composition g composition f denoted as theta and this will be a function from open interval a b to r defined by theta x is equal to 
H composition G composition F of X which is defined as H of G of Fx. Now since theta is equal to H composition G composition F and H, G and F are all 1, 1 and on 2, we can say that their composition H composition G composition F which is equal to theta is a 1, 1 on 2 function from open interval AB to the set of real numbers R. So here we have defined theta from open interval AB to R by theta of x is equal to H composition G composition F of x. Theta of x is H composition G composition F of x which is H of G of F of x as we have mentioned earlier and this is equal to H of G of F x. Remember the functions were defined as a fx is equal to x minus of a plus b by 2, g of x is equal to 2x by b minus a and hx equal to x by x square minus 1. So we have to use these three functions here. So h of g of fx, fx is x minus a plus b by 2. Now g of x is a 2x by b minus a. So g of x minus a plus b by 2. So you have to replace here x with x minus a plus b by 2. So when you replace this, you will get this is equal to h of g of x minus a plus b by 2 is uh, 2 into x replaced with x minus a plus b by 2. So you will get 2 into x minus a plus b by 2 whole divided by b minus a. Now simplifying this a little further, you can multiply this 2 inside. So you will get 2x minus of a plus b by b minus a. Now to find h of 2x minus of a plus b by b minus a, you have to replace x in h of x with 2x minus of a plus b by b minus a. So this will become h of 2x minus of a plus b by b minus a will become 2x minus of a plus b by b minus a the whole divided by 2x minus of a plus b by b minus a the whole square minus 1. Now you can see that there is a b minus a the whole square in the denominator and there is a b minus a in the numerator here. We will be multiplying each terms here with b minus a the whole square. So when you multiply all the terms with uh, b minus a the whole square, you can see that this b minus a and one of the b minus a here will get deleted. Here you have a b minus a the whole square and b minus a the whole square and this b minus a the whole square will get cancelled. So what you get is uh, b minus a into 2x minus of a plus b in the numerator by denominator you have 2x minus a plus b the whole square. So using the formula you will get 4x square minus 2 into 2x into a plus b that means 4x into a plus b plus a plus b the whole square minus 1 into b minus a the whole square is b minus a the whole square. Now you got to simplify a little bit. So the last two terms of the denominator it is a plus b the whole square minus b minus a the whole square. So you'll get uh, that will be a plus b the whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square minus b minus a the whole square is uh, b square minus 2ba or 2ab plus a square. So if you subtract this you, will, you can see that a square minus a square will go b square minus b square will go. So you'll get 2ab minus minus 2ab which is 4ab. So this term will be 4ab. In the denominator you will have 4x square minus 4x into a plus b plus 4ab. You can take 4 as a common factor in the denominator. So you will get b minus a by 4, b minus a in the numerator and by 4 in the denominator which is a common factor into what is left here in the numerator is 2x minus of a plus b and in the denominator is x square minus x into a plus b plus ab. Now 
the denominator you can see that it is x square minus x into a plus b plus a b which can be factored as x minus a into x minus b. So you will get this is b minus a by 4 numerator is 2x minus of a plus b by denominator is factored as x minus a into x minus b. You can further factor this term you can write it as uh, x minus a plus x minus b by x minus a into x minus b. You can split it here so you'll get uh, x minus a by x minus a into x minus b plus x minus b by x minus a into x minus b. So from the first term x minus a x minus a will delete in the second term x minus b x minus b will delete so you'll get 1 by x minus b plus 1 by x minus a or 1 by x minus a plus 1 by x minus b. So you get you got theta of x is equal to b minus a by 4 into 1 by x minus a plus 1 by x minus b. Now we have already seen that theta is equal to h composition g composition f is a 1 1 onto function from closed interval a b to the set of real numbers r. Now this means that open interval a b is similar to r and this completes our proof. Now we shall move on to the part b of the question. Show that an unbounded interval like a infinity, open interval a infinity is equal to set of all x is that x greater than a has the same cardinality as that of r. That means here we have to show that open interval a infinity is similar to r. That means there exists a 1 1 onto function from a infinity to r. For this we will define a function f from a infinity to r by f of x is equal to x minus 1 by x minus a. Now we have to check whether this function is 1 1 and on 2. For checking whether the function is 1 1, we take two points x1, x2 in the domain of the function f which is a open interval a infinity. Then we shall start with f of x1 is equal to f of x2. We have to show that x1 is equal to x2 for proving that f is 1 1. Now f of x1 is equal to f of x2 implies that f of x1 is x1 minus 1 by x1 minus a equal to f of x2 is x2 minus 1 by x2 minus a. Now take this x2 to the left side and uh, 1 by x1 minus a to the right side. So you'll get x1 minus x2 is equal to 1 by x1 minus a minus 1 by x2 minus a. Now when you cross multiply this you will get x2 minus a minus x1 minus a whole divided by x1 minus a into x2 minus a. So here minus a and this is plus a will be deleted so you will get x2 minus x1 in the numerator. So when you take this term to the left side so you will get x1 minus x2 minus x2 minus x1 by x2 minus a into x1 minus a. So if you take this minus inside you will get minus x2 plus x1 which is x1 minus x2 and this will become plus. Now if you look at these terms carefully, you from these two terms you can take a x1 minus x2 as a common factor. So what is left will be 1 here and 1 by x2 minus a into x1 minus a equal to 0. So this means that x1 minus x2 is equal to 0 or 1 plus 1 by x2 minus a into x1 minus a equal to 0. So from here you will get x1 is equal to x2 or you will get 1 by x1 minus a into x2 minus a equal to minus 1. Now we know that x1 and x2 are elements of a infinity. 
So this means that both x1 and x2 are greater than a. That means x1 minus a and x2 minus a will be both positive. This is positive. This is also positive as x is an element x will be greater than a. x is an element of a infinity. Now since both are positive, 1 by x1 minus a into x2 minus a cannot be minus 1. So we, we will rule out this possibility and from here we will get x1 is equal to x2. This implies that f is 1 1. Now we have to check whether this function is on 2. To check whether this function is on 2, we will take any element c of r. And if f of x is equal to c, then we have to check whether this x will belong to a infinity or not. If that x belongs to a infinity, we can say that this function f is on 2. If it does not belong to a infinity, we can say that this function is not on 2. For that, let c be an element of r. Then f of x is equal to c implies that x minus 1 by x minus a equal to c. You multiply it throughout with x minus a. So here you will get x into x minus a. And here if you multiply with x minus a, x minus a, x minus a will delete, you will get 1 and equal to c into x minus a. Simplifying this equation, we will get x square minus ax minus 1 is equal to cx minus ac. So take everything to the left side, you will get x square minus c plus a into x plus ca minus 1 is equal to 0. You can see that this is a quadratic equation and you can use the quadratic formula to find the value of x. So x is equal to c plus a plus or minus root of minus of c plus a the whole square which is c plus a the whole square minus 4 into 1 into c a minus 1. So c plus a the whole square is c square plus 2 c a plus a square minus from here you will get minus 4 c a plus 4. Plus 2 ca and minus 4 ca will give you minus 2 ca. So you will get c square minus 2 ca plus a square and what is left is plus 4. Now we will consider the case when uh, c is greater than a. So we will consider it as two cases. One is when c is greater than a. The second case is when c is less than or equal to a. Now when c is greater than a, Take x as the positive value here. That means uh, c plus a plus root of c square minus 2ca plus a square plus 4. Now we know that uh, c square minus 2ca plus a square plus 4 is clearly greater than c square minus 2ca plus a square. Because you have an additional plus 4 here. So this quantity will be greater. Now root of c square minus 2 ca plus a square plus 4 will be greater than root of c square minus 2 ca plus a square. So when you add a c plus a to both sides, so you will get c plus a plus root of c square plus 2 ca plus a square plus 4 is greater than c plus a plus root of c square minus 2 ca plus a square. And uh, divide with the uh, 2 on both sides, 2 is a positive quantity, so still this inequality will hold. So we can say that this entire quantity is greater than c plus a plus root of c square minus 2 ca plus a square whole divided by 2. You know that the quantity inside this root is uh, c minus a the whole square. So this is equal to c plus a plus c minus a by 2. a and minus a will delete. And you have c plus c which is 2c by 2 and you will get it as c. Here we got x greater than c which is greater than a. So x belongs to a infinity. Now when c less than or equal to a, we will take x as c plus a minus root of c square minus 2ca plus a square plus 4. And we know that uh, this part is uh, c minus a the whole square plus 4. Now consider the terms uh, c minus a the whole square plus 4 and here we have c minus a the whole square minus 4 into c minus a plus 4. Now you are given that 
c is less than or equal to a. So if c is less than or equal to a, c minus a is less than or equal to 0, that means negative. So this is a negative quantity. So minus 4 into c minus a is a positive quantity. So we can say that the right side will be greater than. So we will get c minus a the whole square plus 4 is less than or equal to c minus a the whole square minus 4 into c minus a plus 4. And the right hand side you can see that it will be c minus a plus 2 the whole square. c minus a plus 2 the whole square is c minus a the whole square minus 2 into c minus a into 2 which is 4 into c minus a plus 2 square which is 4. Taking the roots on both sides, you will get uh, root of c minus a the whole square plus 4 is less than or equal to root of c minus a plus 2 the whole square. Now if you multiply with minus on both sides, so you will get minus root of c minus a the whole square plus 4 is greater than or equal to minus root of c minus a plus 2 the whole square. So you can add a c plus a on both sides which is a positive quantity. So you'll get c plus a minus root of c minus a the whole square plus 4 is greater than or equal to c plus a minus root of c minus a plus 2 the whole square. Now you can divide with uh, 2 on both sides. So you will get this c plus a minus root of c minus a the whole square plus 4 is greater than or equal to c minus a minus root of this you can write it as c minus a minus 2 the whole square. And root of c minus a minus 2 the whole square is c minus a minus 2. So from here c and uh, minus c will get deleted. So you will get a plus a which is 2a plus 2 whole divided by 2. So 2a plus 2 whole divided by 2 if you divide by 2 you will get a plus 1 and a plus 1 is clearly greater than a. So we got x greater than a. This implies that x is an element of a infinity. Now we have shown that if x is any element of r or x is any real number then f of x is equal to c implies that x is an element of open interval a infinity and this implies that the function f from a infinity to r is on 2. So earlier we have shown that the function f is 1 1 now we have shown that the function f is on 2 that means the function f from a infinity to r is 1 1 and on 2. So this means that a infinity is similar to r. That means a infinity has the same cardinality as that of r which is a set of real numbers. And this completes the proof of part b. Now moving on to part c. Using open intervals make it more convenient to produce the required 1 1 on 2 functions but as it's not really necessary that means in part a and part b we were just uh, showing that any open interval was equivalent to r. Now part c shows that it is not always necessary that r should be equivalent to any open interval. Here we have to show that interval closed 0 open 1 is similar to open interval 0 1 by exhibiting a 1 1 on 2 function between these two sets. That means we have to define a function f from closed 0 open 1 to open interval 0 1 and show that this function is 1 1 and on 2. For this let x1 x2 x3 etc be a strictly decreasing infinite sequence. It is not necessary that you should consider a strictly decreasing infinite sequence. You can also consider a strictly increasing sequence. Here we are considering a strictly decreasing infinite sequence. For example, uh, 1 by 2 raised to n 
the sequence is strictly decreasing because uh, the terms of the sequence are 1 by 2, 1 by 2 square which is 1 by 4, 1 by 2 cube which is 1 by 8 etc. So you can see that this uh, sequence is strictly decreasing. So you can consider such a sequence. Now let us define a function f from uh, closed 0 open 1 to open interval 0 1 by f of 0 is equal to x1. The image of 0 is x1 which is the first element of the sequence and f of xn is equal to xn plus 1. It means uh, if xn is any element of the sequence then the image will be xn plus 1. For example, image of x1 that means f of x1 equal to x2. Image of x2 that means f of x2 equal to x3 and so on. And for all other x other than the 0 and elements of the sequence, that means for all x element of open interval 0, 1 minus the elements of the sequence x1, x2, x3. We define f of x is equal to x. So that means f from closed 0, open 1 to open interval 0, 1 is defined as f of 0. The image of this point 0 will be the first term of the sequence x1 and the image of all the terms in the sequence will be the next term of the sequence. That means f of x1 will be x2 f of x2 will be x3 and so on and for all the other points in this interval other than 0 and the points of the sequence we have f of x is equal to x. We shall now show that this function f is 1 1 and on 2. For showing that f is 1 1 we take any two elements x and y in the sequence. Let x and y element of the sequence x1 x2 etc xn such that x not equal to y. So for elements of the sequence, we have f of xn equal to xn plus 1. So if x and y are two distinct elements of the sequence, then clearly their images will not be same. Then x will be some xk whose image is xk plus 1 and y will be some xm whose image will be xm plus 1. And so f of xk will not be same as f of xm. So we can say that f of x not equal to f of y and so f is 1 1 on this sequence sequence x1 x2 etc. So we have shown that in this case the function f is 1 1. Now we shall show that f is on to in this set of elements of the sequence. For that let y be any element of the set of all elements of the sequences. So y is an element of set x1 x2 etc means that y is some xn or y is equal to xn for some n and we know that by the definition of this xn means f of xn minus 1. That means you got a point in the sequence xn minus 1 whose image is y and if y is x1 if y is equal to x1 then by the definition of f we have f of 0 equal to x1 which is y. So in this case we can see that f is on to or f is on to on the set of all points belonging to the sequence. Now we shall check whether f is 1, 1 and on to outside the sequence. Now if it is not a point of the sequence, that means y element of 0, 1 minus set of all points of the sequence, then we have by definition f of x is equal to x, which means that f of x is the identity function on this set, open interval 0, 1 minus set of all x1, x2, etc, xn, etc. Now we know that the identity function f of x is equal to x is 1 1 and on 2. So we can say that this function f is 1 1 and on 2 in all the cases whether it belongs to the points in the sequence or whether it belongs to the points outside the sequence in interval 0 1. So thus we can say that the function f from interval closed 0 open 1 2 open interval 0 1 is 1 1 and on to and hence we can say that the interval closed 0 1 is similar to open interval 0 1.
And this completes proof of part C.